This is Phil Hack, and I wanted to talk to you about self-updating websites. I'm a big fan of the feature of the Visual Studio Extension Manager that lets you know when an extension has a new version available. Uh, the iPhone does this with their App Store as well. And I thought to myself, wouldn't it be nice if your web application could do this? For example, I work on a blog engine called Subtext, and I thought to myself, wouldn't it be nice if Subtext users could be notified from within Subtext when a new version of Subtext is available? And not only that, but actually have Subtext itself update itself. So here I'm creating a uh, prototype version of Subtext. Uh, this will be a very uh, low feature version. And let's just, uh, hello, subtext v1.0.0. So all this ver version of subtext does is display this uh, message. And let's run this real quick so we can see that uh, we have a running web application. Now what I want to do is uh, prepare this application to be self-updatable. So what I'm going to do here is install this prototype proof of concept package that I've been working on and I have it on my local machine. But what I can do here is uh, local packages and specify a directory as a package source in NuGet. And so now when I uh, right click and add library package reference and click uh, local packages we can see I have auto update available. So this is a version 0 0.1, uh, it's very rough proof of concept um, that allows your website to update itself and it makes use of NuGet core APIs in order to do that. So after installing that, you can see here that we have this new spec file. Uh, the new spec file tells NuGet uh, information and metadata about the package that you want to create. So we'll call this subtext. And then I'll go in here and fill in some of this metadata. And you'll notice here that we have these files elements. You might need to change that for your site. Or if you integrate this into a build process, ideally you wouldn't need to specify this at all. Uh, but for demo purposes, I have that in there. And what this allows me to do is go to the package manager console and run this new package command here against the new spec file and specify a target file. And I'll call it uh, subtext 1.0.0. If I can type here, new pkg. That packaged up my entire website into a NuGet package. And what I need to do is um, install that into this website in such a way that it, uh, the website thinks it has a version 1 installed at runtime, not at compile time. And that's an important distinction to make. So let's cut this and You'll have to read the accompanying blog post to understand what I'm doing next, but I'm going to cop, uh, create a packages folder within app data, and then we're going to paste this guy into here. Now with that, we can actually run the site and we should be able to check that it has, that it thinks version one is installed. And when we install this app update or package, you'll notice here it created this area called installation installation slash update uh, slash check and we can see here that it thinks subtext 1.0 is currently installed and there's no updates available great so let's build version 2 of the site so here we'll just uh, change it to be version 2 uh, bigger and better so now I've built version 2 it's time to package it up again so what we'll need to do is go to the new spec file and tell it that, hey, this is version 2 now. And then I will go to the console here and I will create the package again. But this time I'm going to call it 2.0. And that's going to create a package in our web root again. And all we need to do here is deploy this package to our package feed, wherever that may be. Uh, let's make sure we pack it. Uh, not the spec file, but the actual package file. And that's going to be in dtemp packages. Note that in a real world situation, you would probably deploy this to uh, some online feed so that all your users can get to it. And we just need to go into um, web.config here and we can tell it where the package source is going to be. 
for demo purposes, I have it in this local directory, but you could have it in a online website, uh, a no data feed, and we have a nuget.server for that purpose. So with this in place, I can go back to here and I can refresh this page. And we can see here this message pops in that says a new version of the website is available. Click upgrade to upgrade the website. So now from the convenience of my browser, I can click upgrade. And we see here that the app has been successfully upgraded to version 2.0. Great job. So let's go home or to the home page. And we can see here, hello subtext 2.0, bigger and better. So with that, we can uh, use NuGet core APIs in a scenario that's completely different from using it uh, within Visual Studio to upgrade a running website. Um, and hopefully you find this useful and uh, I will consider making this um, code available on codeplex.com at some point uh, if I get some interest. So thanks for listening and I appreciate you taking your time.